Of course, we couldn't know what would happen after October 7, but when it happened, we all exchanged messages and felt that uh, this does something to the movie we just made. And also, we decided to finish it earlier and to show it at Berlinale. So, um, yeah, I tried to finish it very quickly, and uh, I just finished it two days before yesterday, actually, to present it here, because we feel it's the very moment for this film. Um, what we want to achieve with the film, one thing of it is to, to tell people who say, we cannot hear it any longer, is, does there really have to be another film about this subject? Yes. There can never be enough stories to be told about this, and I think we are giving it a new perspective. I, I would agree with, with Julia, and I think that the film is, you know, it's about a very specific, but also unfortunately very universal experience, which is not just, it's about not just um, a massive, massive, massive act of violence, but the generational, intergenerational consequences yeah. of that. And I think, that it's important to acknowledge that it's very, very much about the history of anti-Semitism and the history of the Jewish experience, but it's also a story about how um, a legacy of violence affects anybody. Yeah. And there are so many groups who carry trauma in this way, yeah. and hopefully an examination of trauma like this, looking backwards, can help us think about um, the legacy that we create moving forwards. They both put it so well. Of course, the, 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 the movie stands and falls as it always would have done had October the 7th never happened. The truth of the Holocaust is still there and the legacy of it and the effect on people. And obviously for me to go to Auschwitz to film uh, the first time I'd been there, knowing that I had family who had perished in that place was, was very, uh, an extraordinary feeling because the generation of survivors that I knew wanted me to grow up in a free society, free of uh, anti-Semitism, free of that legacy. They thought the victory over the Holocaust, the victory over hatred, would be to be almost unaware of it. They didn't want the children to be burdened with the knowledge of what had happened. But of course, as time has passed, the message is slightly different, is that it's too important to keep it alive and to remember, because uh, while history may not repeat itself, as somebody once put it, rhymes. And there are similar feelings now, as we know, rising up. And uh, the lessons of the Holocaust are what they always were. But as, uh, as Lena said, they are so much to do with the personal burden and legacy and of, of, the, of the violence and the cruelty. And the, depravity that humans are capable of. And I feel very lucky, and I know Lena too, we grew up in a period where you don't really experience that sort of appalling depravity. It's only through the record. Um, so it's worth telling that story. And, and I also think it's important to acknowledge that um, the far right, be it here or in the US, there's an incredible and shocking um, amount of anti-Semitic rhetoric, and there's also a shocking amount of Islamophobic rhetoric, anti-black rhetoric, transphobic rhetoric. The goal is to isolate people based on their identities and make them feel inhuman. And that's a universal story, unfortunately. Also, the humor or this very special tonality of humor and drama comes from Lily Brett's books. And that was something very new to me when I read it, um, started reading her books in the 90s. That was especially new to me because as a German, uh, when you go to school, you read so much about it, but Germans wouldn't dare to mix humor into that. We just wouldn't dare it, rightly so. And so that was like a window <laughs> was open and when Lily's books came to Germany for me. And John and I, we knew we need to stay true to that tonality uh, that Lily brought to Germany and to, to the world, probably. Um, and yeah, so for me, it's easier to direct drama and it's such a challenge um, to do something funny. So. For me, 
no one else than Lena could play that. I was looking for actors who are so funny, who make me laugh, who, who, who know that timing and all you need to do good comedy. Because it was such a challenge, I knew I couldn't probably meet that tonality that Lily Brett created with brilliant drama actors. I just felt I need two actors who make me laugh when I watch their <laughs> YouTube clips and um, their Instagram posts and all of that. So yeah, um, no one else could play it then, the two of them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on a lighter note, in terms of locations, it, there was a, a marvellous irony, really, um, in, the, uh, in, in that the film takes place in Poland, uh, behind the Iron Curtain. The, yes, there's Solidarność, but it's in 1989, 1990, um, Marxist housing for the workers, a very grim architecture. It's very hard to find that in Poland yeah. now because <laughs> Poland has undergone an economic miracle, <laughs> um, rather like the German economic miracle of the 50s and 60s. And the irony is, in order to find places that look grim and terrible <laughs> and Marxist, you have to go to Germany. <laughs> so, so we went to film in Gera and Halle in the old east in order to find something that looked Polish. <laughs> well, I have to say, my apartment in Halle was so nice, it I was. wanted to buy it. Yeah. I wanted to just Oh, moved yeah, there. Nice I had such a glamorous apartment. I thought you could never afford this in a city. The ceilings were so high. <laughs> I love Halle too. But, yeah. but he's right. We found everything we needed true. there. Yes, it's true. And in Berlin. Yeah. It's true. We yeah. were here a lot. I always love the idea of experimenting with genre and, and one of the reasons I feel so lucky is I was I was surprised that Yulia thought of me for the movie. I mean, I joked earlier, I was like, but what about Margot Robbie. I was like, you could have anybody that you wanted. And so the fact that she felt that um, I was capable of doing something like this, that I deserved to be there with an actor of Stephen's caliber, was a very special experience for me. And even if I, you know, just go about back to, to playing total goofballs, it, I, it's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. But, um, you know, I'm currently in production on something that is absolutely and completely without a message, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>